sell the why. Get someone to understand why you do what you do. The reason for that is because the brain has three layers. The one inside, the one in the middle, when people say, I felt in my gut, I felt in my heart, they're talking about that, that, that center of their brain. That center of the brain only responds to the why when it comes to things. So before I was able to come up with a solution, I wanted to examine why we break down. Please take a look at the slide. I hope everyone can see it. Take a look at it. And on your own, see if you could relate to any of these reasons up there. I'm just going to leave it there for about a, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Take a look at it. You should be able to spot maybe why things are not happening in your store. Uh, by the way, if you're a manager in the room, I wouldn't stress the weak resources, you know, with that management thing. If they're here, if they're here. Yeah, yeah, but you know, don't point it out. Don't take a note back to, to the dealership. Okay, so I tried to come up with an answer to that. And I framed my answer on what I call the four pillars of my process. There are four. One is uh, we have to be able to enhance our image in the eyes of our customers. When they come to see us, um, they're not looking forward, they're not jumping of joy based on the reputation that we have as car people, okay? Uh, listen to that, uh, read that little uh, article that Sean was talking about. So I wanna make sure that we do that first. I wanna be able to promote my product above the competition. And the third one is really, really key. You gotta seek first to understand, then to be understood. You have to measure, you have to measure the desire on your customer's part. Um, you have to make sure, the gentleman before me, you have to make sure uh, mention this, you have to make sure that you get your process to sink in with theirs. If you don't make sure that your selling process is syncing with theirs, you are either going to be left behind or you're going to be a little bit ahead. If you're ahead, you're too pushy. If you're behind, you don't know what you're doing, so you really have to know how to sink that in. I'll touch on this a little bit later when I get into my process, and you'll be able to see that moment that you have to be able to sync the two together. And then the last piece here is the heart of your seven habits, Sean. It's to be able to accomplish win-win. I go slightly beyond that. It's win-win-win. Everyone involved has to win, including our salespeople. So when it came down to forging a new road to the sale, I borrowed the game of baseball. The game of baseball is brilliant. For someone that grew up in the Middle East playing soccer on the streets of Damascus, it took a while to understand the game of baseball, but I finally got it. It's really, really brilliant, and it conforms to the seven habits of highly effective people that John speaks about. Take a look. Uh, here's a, a, a field. A player will get on deck, will uh, take their turn. Their job is to hit the ball correctly, and then secure their bases, and then come home and score. So. They get on deck to be proactive. They go to home plate to begin with the end in mind, and then they secure their bases one at a time. So I took that concept and I laid hours on it. And I took those four pillars and I created my basis to frame my job and my assignment. So uh, I'm gonna get on deck, be ready mentally, physically, and verbally. I'm going to meet a customer and my first job is to enhance my image and get them to change that perception that they have about us. That's your first base. Second base is I want to be able to promote my product above the competition. And then I need to be able to truly understand their wishes. Every buyer of any kind, when they make the decision to buy, and that decision happens here, when they make that decision, they immediately attach a number of wishes to that. Some with, some without money, but there are a number of wishes. Your job, my job, is to try to figure out what those are and then convert those into an offer to purchase your product. You secure your bases, you are now in position to come home and score. That gives me clarity for what I need to do. I have four assignments that I have to win, that I have to be really, really good at. There they are. You have the people assignment, you have the product, the formal opening of the transaction, and then finally reaching that win-win agreement. And the sequence of these assignments must be 
very, very clear and very, very framed based on what you see in front of you. The next job is to connect the dots. So, to get on my first assignment, to secure my first base, I have three very, very clear steps. And they are the welcome, information exchange, and then making the connection. By the way, I call this the welcome, not the meet and greet. The meet and greet is backwards. You don't meet and greet, you greet, and then you meet. So I decided to call it the welcome. It's warmer, it's friendlier, and it's personal. So you get yourself down the road, and that's about a few minutes of interaction. And then just before I make my next turn, I'm going to synergize. So I am going to touch with my first base coach. I call it EMI. I'll dive into it a little bit later. Early management introduction as opposed to no introduction, traditional TO, or bring on the baseball bat or the hammer when problems occur. So I'd like for my manager to be introduced early on. I'd like them to be openers, not just closers. If you open the right way, it will almost close itself. 